This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone. So we'll start with this problem, and after that, we'll finish the rest of the part of nomenclature of organic compounds. Here we have the problem. The aliphatic compound having cyclic structure are known as. So we have completed this part, not in previous class. The day, uh, the previous of the previous class, we have uh, discussed about this. That is classification of organic compounds, cyclic, acyclic, then aromatic, benzenoid, all these things we have discussed. So if you consider that part, then we can answer this question that the aliphatic compounds having cyclic structure. Now, aliphatic compounds means there will not be any aromatic ring. So, aliphatic, it is not necessary that it has to be cyclic. It may be cyclic or it may be open chain structure also. Both are possible. As It may be cyclic or it may be open chain. Now, it is asking specially those aliphatic compounds having cyclic structure that we have to find. So considering that the correct answer will be option B that is alicyclic compound. So this will be the correct option. Now why the other options are not correct? If we consider the other options that is option A heterocyclic compounds. Now heterocyclic compounds it will contain not just cyclic structure will be there but there will be also some presence of heteroatoms such as oxygen, it may be sulfur, nitrogen, etc. And in this uh, case, there may be aromaticity also. So heterocyclic compounds, for example, if I'm writing this compound, which is heterocyclic because it is having cyclic structure, there is heteroatom oxygen present, and this is actually furan. So this is example of heterocyclic compounds, but this molecule is aromatic. Uh, aromatic. This is not aliphatic. So when it is aliphatic plus having cyclic structure, then it cannot be heterocyclic, it is alicyclic. Then why this one is not correct, that is arins. So arins means there must be benzene ring or uh, fused benzene ring. So for example, the simplest example we can take is benzene ring or it may be with any substituent such as OH group attached to benzene that is also under the category of arins. It may be naphthalene that is two benzene ring fused together that is also Aromatic compounds. So aromatic compounds, another way we express it, which is aliphatic. So this is obviously not aliphatic compounds. There should not be any aromatic character. We have seen uh, that four characteristics must be fulfilled if we are calling any compound, organic compound aromatic. But that is that conditions are not present in case of aliphatic. So this is not correct option. And polycyclic compounds. Now polycyclic compounds, obviously it is cyclic and poly. That means at least two ring it will be fused together or it may be like this see suppose two rings fuse together or you can also take the example of this one that is naphthalene that is also a type of uh, polycyclic compounds but it is cyclic as well as poly but when we are talking about aliphatic compound having cyclic structure it is not necessary that more than one ring has to be there only one ring is enough so considering all this, here correct option will be option B. The next question, it is actually as if the reverse question of the first one, because now it is asking what is alicyclic compounds. So we have already chosen this option B where we have seen alicyclic compounds. Now in the question directly, it is asking what is alicyclic compounds. So obviously it will be aliphatic as well as cyclic. That means it is matching with option D. The other options that is the first one, it is aromatic. Obviously, this is not correct. Now, alicyclic compounds, if you simply say it is aliphatic, it will be partially correct because it is aliphatic as well as it is uh, cyclic. Because sometimes aliphatic compounds, it may be open chain also. But in that case, you cannot use the term alicyclic. So simply saying aliphatic is not enough. Then heterocyclic, we have already seen what is heterocyclic. This is the example. So considering all this, the last one will be the correct option. So these two questions are almost similar. So the option that we have uh, chosen in the first question, that is actually the question for the second one. The next problem, the correct decreasing order of priority for the functional groups of organic compounds in the IUPAC system nomenclature. 
So here we have total four groups. We have here CHO group. That is when this comp uh, group is present, we call them aldehydes. Then acid group or carboxylic acid. Then we have sulfonic acid, SO3H, and we have amide, CONH2, or you can simply write it like this. Now, what is the uh, order of in decreasing or increasing? Here it is asking decreasing. That means we have to first mention the highest priority functional group. Okay. So here we have the order for some functional group, not just these four. You can also find some other functional groups. But here we will choose those functional groups that are present in our options. So in options, we have CO2H. We have SO3H, then we have CONH2, and we have this one, that is aldehyde. So now you can see first position, there should be CO2H. After that, second position should be SO3H. Third position should be CONH2, and the fourth position should, should be CHO. So it is matching with option C, okay? So this should be, should, uh, should be the correct option. And decreasing order, uh, a table I have uh, already mentioned in the last class. Uh, the table where we have seen uh, same group. Suppose just take the example of uh, CO2H. The same group when it is uh, present within, that is in the parent chain or when it is not present in the parent chain. Or suppose a particular group when it is not the main functional group, but it is the treated as substituent then the term that we use that is completely different so all this we have seen in the single table in the last class so and in that table also all the groups that are mentioned that is in the decreasing order and it is clearly mentioned in the heading so just check that table so that you can answer this question next one is hybridization related question now it is asking the hybridization of carbon atoms in carbon carbon single bond if you look at this molecule first there is cc triple bond then there is carbon carbon single bond this is the single bond and then we have double bond now this molecule that is ac triple bond ch we have seen its complete orbital diagram in detail in the previous classes we have seen now in this case as if if you replace this hydrogen with this moiety you will get this molecule or another way you can think if you consider the right hand side part if you replace one of this hydrogen with this group now we will also get the same molecule but the actual structure is c then carbon hydrogen double bond ch h now we have to find out the hybridization of the carbon atoms suppose this is number one this is number two so here it is number one this is the number two because this is the single bond between two carbon atoms now number one carbon it is part of triple bond one side there is triple bond another side there is single bond so this is obviously sp hybridized now if we consider the second carbon that is carbon number two the second carbon of cc single bond this is sp2 hybridization right because it is as if derivative of ethylene this molecule is ethylene and it is as if the derivative not just uh, if you do not think in that way that is also fine we just have to check that surrounding this carbon how many pi bonds are there so as you can see there is only one pi bond that means only one p orbital is not part of hybridization that means it is sp2 similarly for carbon number one we have two pi bonds and one sigma bond. Now two pi bond means out of three p orbital, only one p orbital is part of hybridization. These two are not part of hybridization and these will take part in pi bond. So in this way also you can understand this is sp and this is sp2. So this option will be the correct option. This is number one carbon, this is number two carbon, okay? Now we will uh, continue the nomenclature part of organic compounds. Some of the uh, rules we have already seen. Now, still uh, we have to continue this because this is very uh, elaborately we have to understand. 
we can get uh, so many different types of problems based on this nomenclature okay the vital points that we have to keep in mind when we will write the IUPAC name of organic compounds so these names when we will write it should be written as if it is a single word okay whether there is substituents or not still we have to write it with a single word that means there should not be any gap but remember there is some exception notable exception of organic salt suppose we have any carboxylic acid like this rcooh but instead of writing oh suppose there is sodium salt that is h is replaced by some uh, metal atom now this will be treated as salt organic salt because it is sodium salt of organic acid rcooh so in this case this is the cationic part and this is the anionic part so just in case of organic compounds suppose when you write the name of nacl you write sodium first and then chloride that means sodium and chloride between these two words there is some gap so just like that here also we have to write it first cationic part name we have to write so sodium and then depending on this r group this anionic part it will be ending with the term carboxylate so if i simply consider uh, the acid chcooh C CHTCOON. So this is sodium salt of acetic acid. Okay. So this is sodium acetate. So just like that, sodium gap acetate. So in this case, we have to uh we cannot use write it as single word, but these are the exceptional cases. And also there is some acids or acid derivatives where we cannot write uh, in a single word. Remember when there is CO2H functional group. That is the main functional group. We end it like oic acid. Now, when you are writing oic acid, depending on butanoic acid or pentanoic acid, whatever, you can see there is some gap because we are ending the term oic, then there is a gap, and then there is a separate word acid. So, in these cases, organic salt, acid, or acid derivative, it is not single word, there will be some uh, gap between two words. Otherwise, in all other cases, these names you have to write as if it is a single word. We can use comma between two adjacent number or letter symbol. And not just comma, we also we have to use hyphens to separate numbers and letter symbols. Now simply uh, saying this statement is not enough. We just have to see the examples. So here, as you can see, we have this example, 2,2-dimethyl-3-hexene. So hexene, suppose this name is given, if you are writing the structure, you have to focus first on this, how many carbon, which is hex in the parent chain. Now, if it is a hexacarbon, that means first I am writing this like in this way, that is six carbons I have already written. And if this is number two carbon, there will be two methyl substituent and at three position there will be CC double bond. So this compound, its name is written here, 2,2-dimethyl-3-hexene. Now see, after two, there is a comma, then another two because at same position, methyl groups two times, two substituents, two methyl substituents are there at the same position two. So that is why two is written two times. Then we are starting the name dimethyl because two methyl groups are there. Now see, between two, uh, these two and these two, there is a comma. After that, there is a hyphen, then we have written dimethyl, again hyphen, then three, which is uh, the position of the double bond, and then hexene. So in, it is for the CC double bond. Okay, so in this way, we have to use comma and hyphen. The next molecule is, NN dimethyl. Now here it is 2 2 dimethyl. That means at two position we have two methyl groups. But what is the meaning of NN dimethyl? So NN dimethyl means just forget about this substituent for some time and focus on this part methanamide. Now meth means what? Only one carbon. Now one carbon and then it is ending with amide. Now amide means this group, right? But there should not be more than one carbon. So how you will satisfy the valency? There will be H. 
So this is actually methanamide. But it is not the complete structure because we also have to take care of this part, which is NL dimethyl. Now here, if simply methanamide is mentioned, you will write the structure like this. But here it is NL dimethyl. So what you will do? These two hydrogen we will remove. And at that part, we will write two methyl group. So as here, methyl groups are not any on any carbon atom, but it is replacement of H and attached to nitrogen atom. So that is why it is written in this way. NN dimethyl, then methanamide. And look, after this substituents, that is two methyl group, we have directly written this meth and then amide. There is no gap between dimethyl and methanamide. Okay. But there is a hyphen and comma between 2NN. So this 2N, it will be capital because uh, it is it signifies nitrogen atom. Structural prefix such as meso, C, trans. Now what is meso? What is meso is actually, uh, we will study about it later, not now. But just remember these terms, which are specifically used in special cases, this will be always italicized. So italics we have to use for this. What is this? What is trans? That will be dealt with later. Once we finish isomerism, right now we cannot understand it. But they are also part of IUPAC nomenclature. But uh, only in some special cases. So that we'll deal with later. But remember these terms are italicized. And joined to the name by hyphen. So if there is a cis configuration, it is mainly used for CC double bond where similar types of groups are on the same side. See, two chlorine, they are on the same side. So this will be cis. Now we will start the uh, name of this molecule with cis and then hyphen, then rest of the name we have to write. So it should be hyphen. Uh, that is after you writing cis or trans, you have to write hyphen and then the rest of the name. And this should be italics. Now these prefixes, prefix, why we are saying it prefix? Because it is present at the start, starting position. So that is it is prefix. Something at the start, starting position, it should be called as prefix. These prefixes are omitted in alphabetizing compound names or in capitalizing names at the beginning of a sentence. Now, trans to butene. Let me write its structure. So what is butene? Butene means four carbon, obviously. And at two position, there will be double bond. Now why we are calling it trans? Because here, the, the, in these two positions, there is actually hydrogen. But see, these two methyl groups are opposite to each other. Also, you can say that two hydrogens are opposite. So in this case, we have to use the term trans. But T, you don't have to write it capital. So they are omitted in an alphabetizing compound name. So when you will alphabetize, that is when you have to mention it as capital, the capital letter you will start from the name, not for C's or trans. That is, don't write capital C for C's or capital T for trans. That is not needed. Only it should be italics format. And capital will be this one. Though sometimes we use uh, right names without capitalizing. But if we are capitalizing it, then start it from the name, not the T or C of trans or C's. Okay. Structural prefixes. Now, these are one types of prefix, that is meso, cis, trans. There are some structural prefix. Structural prefix means, suppose some groups are present two times, di, tri, tetra. So they are treated as part of the basic name and therefore are neither italicized nor separated by hyphen. So just like cis and uh, trans, where we have to, uh, we are using italics when we will write these terms. But when you are writing di or tri, just see 4 ethyl, 2, 2 dimethyl hexane. So for this name, this dimethyl, that means two methyl substituents, this D 
um, sorry, di, we don't have to use italics. And after di, that is in between di and methyl, there is no hyphen. Just after di, it is not like this. It is completely wrong. After di, don't put any gap. Directly write methyl. You have already seen it here also, dimethyl. So for di tri tetra, that is number of substituents, 3 ethyl, so it is tri ethyl, then tetra ethyl or tetra chloro, whatever it is, just directly write. Don't put hyphen or in the italic format, italics format, okay? Now, stepwise, we will see when we will write the name, though a little bit of idea we have already have in the last class with a particular example but now we will see it stepwise steps to be followed while writing IUPAC name the first step is obviously to choose the parent chain or longest chain because based on this we have to write the what root so this is the first point from which you will start okay suppose some structure is given first look at the structure find out the parent chain or longest chain accordingly you have to choose the word root okay so these rules are for those cases where structure is given and looking at the structure you just have to write the name so when you have any structure the first thing is that you have to do to find out the longest chain and that is based on this you have to write the word root if it is uh, four carbon it is butte five carbon paint six carbon hex like this The next step is appropriate primary suffix or it may be suffixes must be added to the word root to indicate saturation or unsaturation. Fine. So primary suffix that is all about whether the carbon there is CC double bond present or CC triple bond present which is unsaturation. And if it is saturated, then it is CC single bond only. So when it is saturated, that is, uh, we use A and E. Details we have already seen. When it is CC double bond, we use E and E. When it is triple bond, we use Y and E. Sometimes it may be that both CC double bond as well as CC triple bond, both are present simultaneously. So that is why there is a ES mention, primary suffix. It may be more than one. Right? If there is CC double bond, obviously some single bonds will also be there. In that case, it is completely under in category. But sometimes in in both may be present together. So that is why plural is mentioned here. Come to the third step. After primary suffix, that is whether saturation, unsaturation present or not. Take care of this fact. Come to the third point. The molecule contains functional groups or a single group or groups, plural or singular. Because based on that, there will be secondary suffix. It is not necessary that it has to have a functional group. It may not have. But if it is having some functional group, that will be secondary suffix. And that must be added to indicate the main functional group. Secondary suffix is always the main functional group. And remember, it is only applicable if there is any functional group. Otherwise, no question of secondary suffix. Right? But word root and primary suffix, that will always be there. Word root has to be there and primary suffix has to be there. But secondary suffix, it is not compulsory. It may be present, may not be present. Then prefix. Now prefix, it may be primary prefix or secondary prefix, but primary prefix is only for when parent chain is cyclic, uh, not always. And in that case, you have to use cyclo. Though there is some other primary prefix such as phyto, bicyclo, but in our, uh, that is for this syllabus, uh, this cyclo is enough. Then secondary prefix. Now secondary prefix, it signifies whether there is any side chain, that is methyl, ethyl, propyl, or there is any substituent present on the parent chain. It may be halogen, it may be nitro. So all these terms, that is word root, two types of suffix, Two types of prefix, everything we have already studied in previous classes. Now, we are just summarizing when we will actually write the name, how you will proceed. First word root, primary suffix, secondary suffix, 
then primary prefix if it is cyclic compound then finally secondary prefix which is nothing but substituents okay now just consider this molecule how you will start so in this case we have to choose first the longest chain now the longest chain though there will be uh, some rules based on that we will choose the longest chain this is very simple molecule you don't need much uh, many rules to understand how to choose the longest chain but not always you will get this type of simple molecule so in that case we have to know some more rules but right now we will just use this simple compound and we'll see how we can apply all these steps that we have just uh, seen in this table okay so first choose the parent chain now the numbering i will start will start from this side now why it is so because oh group will get that is this carbon with which oh is attached that group that carbon will get number two then this is three so at three position there is methyl substituent and this is the last carbon but suppose if you are doing the reverse process suppose you are starting from this position this is one this is two this is three now in this case carbon number three is attached to h but that is not correct so this is actually a rule that we are going to see after once we finish this part that that carbon you have to move from that carbon when you will choose the longest chain and you will number the carbon from that side where the carbon with which functional group is attached that should be uh, that should be with the least number so that is why this yellow marking we will use not the blue marking blue marking is wrong so i am just erasing it so that there is no confusion so here the longest chain is four carbon the next question is whether there is any prime uh, sorry any secondary suffix basically secondary suffix is present because this is functional group the second point is primary suffix here we do not have any answer duration so it will be uh, under the category of n a n e that is saturated now one two three done four it is not cyclic so no question of primary prefix come to the fifth point secondary prefix will be there because this is the secondary prefix methyl right so how many carbons in the parent chain that is number 1.4 carbon so root what but saturated or unsaturated second question it is saturated so one degree suffix will be n not e nor y number three point is there any functional group yes there is a oh groups on second carbon so secondary suffix will be there and it will be two all all we use for OH group when it is the main functional group. Is there any side chain number four uh, question? Basically, we are treating it as the fourth question because four is this four is not present in our case. It is not side chain. Is there any side chain of substituent? Yes, there is CH3 group present on third carbon. So we have to use this two degree prefix, which is three methyl. Now, when we will write the name, we have to start from prefix obviously because it is prefix so you have to start with it so three methyl so between three and methyl there is hyphen you uh, here don't use any comma comma is only between two three or suppose two three then use comma between two and three after three methyl we have to write the root word but before root word, I will write these two to signify the OH group. Now, that is also you can write. There are two ways. Both are correct. But, and as it is starting with vowel, so butane, that is if we, suppose if it is simply alkane without any OH, it should be like this. But this E will be now omitted. So, butan then directly write ol 3 methyl 2 butanol you can also write it in another way that is also correct any of this you can use so now after hyphen sorry i am not giving any hyphen directly i am writing but then 
butan don't write e because ol it is starting with a uh, vowel so b u t a n then to then all so both are fine whether you write it uh, in this way 3 methyl 2 butanol or you write methyl there is no gap butan no e hyphen 2 hyphen all both are fine okay now we will uh, see the different steps uh, or different rules when we will actually select the parent chain in the previous example it is very easy to choose the parent chain because uh, it is not very complex molecule it is simple molecule but when we have very large structure or long very long chain present in the molecule then how to select the parent chain some rules we have to keep in mind the first step as we know in naming an organic compound is to select the parent chain and based on that you have to choose the root word now it is the longest continuous carbon chain containing as many functional group present or there if there is any multiple bond cc double bond or triple bond or it should contain most of the side chains or any substituents side chains means methyl ethyl propyl or substituents like uh, halogen or nitro group so when you will choose the longest continuous chain all these must be present in that chain it is not that only it is longest but it should also contain all these as much as possible now the first example that we will see here i will write a molecule and uh, based on that molecule we will see how to choose the that is how to choose the longest chain okay so let me draw it methyl then ch then c2h5 ch2 ch c2h5 ch3 now the same molecule i can also write it like this fine see actually i am writing the same molecule but in a different way now in this case if you are doing the numbering in this way suppose you are numbering like this longest chain you are numbering like this then in the longest chain these two are the same thing i am also doing here so in the longest chain these two will be treated as substituents so there are two substituents and the longest chain there is total five carbon right with these two as substituents but is it the correct way to choose the longest chain no though the molecule is i have drawn it in this way but that doesn't mean we have to choose the longest chain in this horizontal uh, way no that is not the way now see what i will do if i am erasing this fine now this c2h5 it is actually written together but suppose it is if it is not written uh, drawn or written together then how it will appear so this c2h5 if i am writing in detail CH2, CH3. Then you will see how to choose the longest chain. And the same thing I am also doing with bond line structure. Same thing. Now see the numbering if I start here 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So now these two methyl groups are actually substituent present at 3 and 5 position or if you consider the bond line structure these two will be the substituents right so here the longest chain shaded part now if i am shading this part so this is actually the longest chain right the green shaded part that is the longest chain and it contains seven carbons and there are two methyl 
substituents. So when I will write the name in the root word, that should be seven carbon, not five carbon. It is seven carbon. That is the root word. So the root word we will use hept. There is no unsaturation. So we will use N. There is no functional group, right? But we have two methyl groups. So the prefix will be at three and five position. There are two methyl groups. So three, five, three comma five, not hyphen. Between two number, don't use hyphen. It is comma. Di methyl. No gap. Directly write hept. 10. Okay. So, heptane. 3, 5 dimethyl heptane. So, there is total 7. So, in this case, we have used word root that we always have to use. Then, primary suffix which is N for saturation. There is no unsaturation and uh, no functional group. So, no question of secondary suffix. But we have this secondary prefix which is 3, 5 dimethyl. Two methyl substituents are present. Okay. So here we have chosen the longest chain, which is seven carbon, the first example. One more example we'll see. For this molecule, we have to choose the longest chain. Fine. Now see, here are different ways you can choose the longest chain. So if you are confused, just write the molecule and choose different ways. And each time you have to count. And remember, it should also contain maximum number of substituents and also it should be the longest chain. Now, in this case, if uh, I am choosing this part, suppose this part I'm choosing and the longest chain. Now see, both the structures are same. It is just written elaborately and this is a bond line structure that is simplest way. So in this case, total seven carbons are present in the shaded, part, I'm sorry, in the highlighted part. So I can do the same thing here. So total seven carbons are there. Now, what if I choose in a different way? Suppose I'm choosing it in this way. Now, this is also seven carbon, isn't it? Right? Now, the third way I can choose it This is also seven carbon. So total three ways I am choosing and each time I am getting there is seven carbon. Now what to do? So if you follow these three different types, different colors I have used, though it is seven carbon in the longest chain, but it is not necessary that always you will have same type of substituent. So choose that seven carbon where there is maximum number of substitutes. Now see, all these three types you can see. So the first type, that is the maroon color, if you observe, there will be two substituents. These substituents, and sorry, let me use different color. So these two are substituents, right? Two substituents. If you follow the blue one, this is actually the blue one, the middle one, then there is two substituents. Sorry, three substituents, these two, and there is a propyl sub three carbon chain substituents. If you follow the green highlight part that I have done for the first picture, then you will be left with two substituents. So these two we are rejecting, we are accepting this one. Though it is true that in all cases we have seven carbon, but still because of maximum number of substituents we are getting only if we follow the blue parent chain. So that is why this should be the correct. So the root word for the following molecule is hept as the longest chain, that is the shaded part, because it contains seven carbons. But we are choosing this one because we have total three alkyl substituents. Now we will number the carbon based on this. Now when we will number the carbon, that is also another question where from we should start. 
Now the rules based on that is how to do the numbering. Here we are discussing how to choose the longest chain. But another question is also there. That question is from which point you should start numbering because numbering you can start from this position or you can start from this position. That is another question. We will deal with that separately. Because there is also some um, different rules for that. So here, how to choose the, that is when we will do the numbering, how to do that, that we will see. So if I am starting it from this position, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So here you can see at 4 position, there is these 3 carbon substituent. And three position and five position, there is two methyl substitutes, right? If I'm starting the numbering from the other side, one, two, three, then four, five. Now, if you start the numbering from the other position, then also it is equivalent position. So that is why we don't have to take care of that fact. It will be uh, simply at three and five position, there is two methyl substituents. That means it is dimethyl. And at four position, there is propyl substituents. Right? So three, five dimethyl. And at four position, there is propyl. And there is no functional groups. So what root word we will use? We will use hept. Then we will use A and E because we do not have any double or triple bond. There is no functional group. So no secondary suffix. But there is substituents at positions 3, 5, and 4. So that is why there will be some prefix, secondary prefix. So this will be the name. 3, 5 dimethyl, then 4 propyl heptate. Now, if the question is arising in your mind, why I will not write the propyl first and then dimethyl? So the reason behind it is that when you are, if you look at these two substituents, Methyl is starting with M. Propyl is starting with P. So M comes before P. So that is why dimethyl should be written first. It is not because of the positions we have written dimethyl first. It is because of alphabetical position. M for methyl and P for propyl. M comes before P. So that is it is written in this way. Now when you will consider this uh, alphabetical order, don't consider di. Di is there just for uh, to indicate the how many methyl groups are there. Uh, but when you will follow the alphabetical order, you have to focus on the uh, methyl M. Fine. So for propyl, there is no gap, then heft and N. Okay. The next rule. So the previous two examples that we have seen, we uh, the, there is some similarity. The similarity is we do not have any functional group. We do not have any unsaturation. But now we will see what if there is unsaturation. The CC double bond or triple bonds, they have more priority than the alkyl side chains. So you have seen there are some alkyl side chains. It may be methyl, it may be propyl. But when there will be unsaturation, they will have more priority than these alkyl side chains. And some other substituents are also, that is hello, that is CLBRI, I'm writing in general, then nitro, then alkoxy, that is O, any alkyl group, it may be O CH3, O ethyl, O propyl. So sometimes, see the CC and CC triple bond, they have more priority, not just more than alkyl, but some other substituents also. So compared to these substituents, CC double or triple bond, they are getting more priority. That is the reason whenever there are two or more chains with equal number of carbons. Suppose you are choosing longest chain two different way. In one way, there is it is containing CC double bond or triple bond. Another way that you have chosen, there is no CC double or triple bond. But in both cases, the number of carbons are same. So what to do? When you will have these two possibility, you have to choose that chain as the longest chain, which is containing this uh, CC double or triple bond. That has to be selected as the parent chain, irrespective of the other chain containing more substituents. So suppose other chains are containing more substituents. 
but still you have to focus on that chain which is involving the cc double or triple bond now let me give you one example so same molecule i will draw two times so that difference we can understand same molecule i am drawing again so in the first case i will draw the numbering i will choose the longest chain suppose it is like this so in this case how many carbons are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 total 6 carbon isn't it but another way also i can choose the longest chain which is containing this is a double bond now in this case 1 2 3 4 5 6 this is also 6 carbon total 6 carbon in both cases but what is the difference the difference is in the second case double bond is present in the longest chain in the first case double bond is not present now you may say that here i have total three substituents in the second case three substituents in the second case two substituents but you have to give more priority to that uh, method that is that parent chain you have to choose which is containing this cc double bond so that is why this should be the correct option sorry not correct option i mean to say this should be the correct way to choose the chain now when you will number it now you have to start it from this side because here you have to give least number to the double bond now you have substituents four position there is methyl substituent and at three position there is isopropyl substituents this type of group is known as isopropyl that we have seen in the last class so that is why uh, that is if suppose the three carbon it is attached in simple way then it is not isopropyl then it is normal simply propyl you have to write but when it is the middle carbon with which it is attached to the parent chain then this iso term you have to use and here we have total uh, six uh, carbon right now one more example we will give here so i hope this is clear how to choose the longest chain however the longest chain must be selected as the parent chain irrespective of whether it contains multiple bonds or not at a first glance it may seem a little confusing but actually see it is uh, not confusing what it is trying to say is that here that is in the previous case in both cases it is six carbon under that condition you are choosing that where this uh, double bond is part of the longest chain or it may be triple bond but suppose in these two examples in one case you are finding it is six carbon in another case it is you are finding that it is seven carbon obviously you have to go with this highest number of longest chain even if whether it is containing multiple bonds or not so that is it is written the longest chain must be selected as the parent chain irrespective of the fact that whether it contains multiple bonds or not so the previous rule that is only applicable when in both the longest chain same number of carbons are there and that is why you are choosing the second method where you have two substituents but this cc double bond is part of the longest chain but don't think that always you have to do so your focus should be on the longest chain as the parent chain whether it is containing multiple bond or not fine next we'll see as example under this uh, for the this third point so here if you look at these molecules these three molecules are separate separate molecules and focus on the shaded part in this part that is the shaded part is the longest chain and here these two we have considered as substituents and even the double bond that is also substituent 
right? And in the shaded part, there is no presence of double bond. Now, if you are thinking why not to choose, this is as the parent chain. But if you choose it as the parent chain, one, two, three, four, five, six, you are getting only six carbon. So this is wrong. But if you consider the shaded part, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there is seven carbon. So that is why it is the correct. The shaded part is correct. And you have at, uh, if we position it, that is number eight, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So at five position and three position, you have two methyl groups. And at four position, we have ethenyl groups. If there is no CC double bond, suppose if it is simply CH2, CH3, we call it ethyl group. But as it is CC double bonds, it is ethenyl, four ethenyl, then three, five dimethyl. Now, why ethenyl we have written first? Because E comes before M, okay? And then dimethyl hept L. Now, the next molecule, second example, look at the shaded part. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here also seven. But suppose if you are choosing this part as the longest chain, there will be one, two, three, four, five, five carbon. So that is why you have not chosen it. And uh, here ending will be same as the previous molecule. And these two will be treated as substituent. So at the same position four, there is ethenyl as well as there is ethyl. So try to understand difference. This is also two carbon substituents. This is also two carbon, but we have not written ethyl. It is ethenyl for CC double bond and it is ethyl for the CC triple bond. And then as usual, heptyl. Come to the third molecule. So in the longest chain, seven carbon, but suppose if you are choosing the longest chain, with CC double bond, it will be one, two, three, four, five, which is not correct. And these two will be treated as substituent, right? So now look at the substituents. The substituent is a little bit unusual because until now, all the substituents that we have seen, the CC double bond that is not directly connected to the uh, parent chain, but here it is directly connected. So this is CH2, CH2. Though it is one line structure, but uh, to understand the structure clearly, it is actually CH2, CH2. So when you have this type of CC double bond directly connected at three and five position, it is not simply methyl group. It is methylidin group. Look at the spelling. Di is obviously there because it is two times, but it is not methyl, it is methylidin. And then heptin. So all these three molecules as the longest chain is heptin. And in the parent chain, we do not have any CC double or triple bond. So that is why all are ending with heptane. It is same. Only difference is substituents, their nature is different. Otherwise, there is no difference. Okay. And the previous molecule here, the name will be. And at three position, there is isopropyl. At four position, there is four methyl. So it will be uh, three isopropyl, four methyl. And at one position, there is double bond and it is six. That means it will be hexyl, hexyl. Okay. Now we will not go to the fourth rule. So there will be uh, some more rules and all these are under this heading. Remember, the heading is Selection of parent chain. So whatever we have discussed under this heading, selection of parent chain, these rules are helping us to choose uh, how to choose the parent chain. Once these rules will be finished, how to choose the parent chain. Next rules that will be to understand the numbering. So once we have selected the parent chain, from which direction we should start the numbering? based uh, that is that is also based on some rules that we have to also learn but selection of parent chain still some parts are uh, we have to complete 
So we, today we are ending the session here. Thank you for listening.